today we are giving the Peerless watercolors. These are dye-based watercolors that have been attached, painted onto a film. And uh, we have some other videos where I show you how to make a swatch card like this. And also I uh, did a field test. We're gonna revisit these today. We're gonna try having a lighter hand. So I've got a cute illustration on, can I believe it's Canton Lockwell Heritage, but I'd have to double check. Anyway, it's a cute illustration on a nicer cotton rag watercolor paper, and hopefully we can nail it this time. And I'm gonna try doing it with a water brush to sort of force me to have a lighter hand because with water brushes, I know it's gonna leak water, it's gonna be a mess if I'm not careful. So hopefully this will help keep me on the straight and narrow. So I inked my illustration. I went ahead and I erased most of the pencil lines. I do actually want to keep the pencil lines up there for the flowers. I want those to appear a little more nebulous in the background. And we're going to go ahead and attach our cute little illustration to um, a support board. Now this is just some masonite. It's actually the back of a broken frame and it works like a charm for this. And and I don't want to actually cover up any of the illustration itself. So I'm using some low tack blue painters tape. I'm actually going to be disgusting and use the skin cells on my arm. Yeah, I know to sort of make it a little less tacky so it won't tear up the back of the paper. And I'm just attaching it to the back in three places so that it won't buckle too badly when we add water. We're not gonna be adding a whole lot of water to this, but it is worth considering. And I have not forgotten that I promised at some point, someday in the future, three years from now, knowing me, um, I promised that we were going to try making our own uh, quote unquote peerless watercolors by putting liquid watercolor on Yupo and I have not forgotten. So I need to go grab a paper towel and I'll be right back. So I've got my paper towel right here and we're gonna go ahead and get started by doing the background. And I think what I'm gonna do, we'll see how well this goes, but I think I want to do something where the green of the grass blends in with the blue of the sky. So what I'm gonna do, and I may have to move the camera, we'll see how well I can do that, is I am applying some of that Peerless to my Ink Essentials craft sheet. And I am, really, gonna be messy today? I am going to brush that into the background. We'll see how this goes. Now, I'm not a huge fan <laughs> of the Heritage Lockwell. Um, I have had a lot of trouble with it on other pieces, so I'm kind of hoping that this lighter application will be something that works for it. We'll find out. I'm also going to want to do purple pom-pom clover and I would like the paper to stay wet until I get to that. But I'm gonna try to keep a light hand. That's actually something I really struggle with. For those of you who follow my work, I do have a tendency to over render things and not in a good way. So hopefully I can stay on the straight and narrow of light and gestural for this piece. We'll see. I always seem to have slight control issues with water brushes. It's okay though. It just kind of forces me, I think, to have a daintier hand. And I'm going to clean. Well, maybe not. Maybe I'll leave the green on there and I can reconstitute it if and when I'm ready for it. We'll see. Going to pick up some more green, this time much more saturated. Uh, work it in down here at the bottom. And hopefully we can get a little bit of a color gradation. But to give you guys someone to go look at and to help promote, not that she needs any 
promotion for me necessarily, but it's always nice to share what you've got. Um, the sort of art style I'm thinking of is uh, Audra Furikichi. I believe that's her last name. I'll double check in two minutes. Um, the way she does her watercolor work for her patrons is a big inspiration for me because they're these beautiful little watercolor sketches and they're really atmospheric yet light. She somehow manages to capture to capture a lot of expression with just a little bit of watercolor. I actually have one of her beautiful sketch cards. She was doing Yuri on Ice ones and I was lucky that month and I got one as a backer. So I can show you guys. I actually have it right by my desk because I do look at it for inspiration. But I'm sort of thinking about how she does her art and her watercolor while I do this. This is a thirsty paper and a lot of texture to it. So it also makes it a little harder to pull the sort of lines I want with the sort of control I'd like to have. You get all that green and there's a lot of it out of my water brush. In fact, I might have to look. This is one of the Jane Davenport water brushes. It basically draws, when you squeeze it to get more ink, or more water rather, it draws the color back up in your brush. So I actually have to go completely empty this. It's a little annoying. Grab the card I'm talking about. See, that's what I mean by she can have a really delicate hand and it still be effective. Next, I want to grab a little bit of deep, no, sky blue, I think. And really, I just want a little bit. Hopefully it's not. Still some green in there, what the heck? And I'm gonna brush it in from the top, clean it, and then try to blend it, we'll see. See, these are dye-based watercolors. The way dye-based watercolors typically work is they become reactivated once you add water, which can make them really hard to layer, but it might actually be beneficial for us today. Oh, my paper dried really quick. That's a little frustrating because I really want the purple that I'm gonna put down to blend out. And we're adding a little more saturated blue here and there. Clean that up as well. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little bit of a fakey fake trick. We'll see if that works with this, it might not. Where I wet the paper around the area I'm gonna wanna blend. These Jane Davenport water brushes are really hard to control. It just wants to like send water everywhere. Then we'll grab some Wisteria Violet. A little too much water went down over there. And the reason I picked this paper is that I had hoped it would be very absorbent and that the paper would stay wet for me and I could do blending. It seems like either the paper is a problem tonight or the fact that it's been very dry here in Nashville is a problem, but just making it a little more difficult to get the effect I really want. Well, that's okay. These sort of difficulties often present an opportunity to learn. And there's some interesting stuff going on anyway. So I'm going to give that a chance to dry. All right, so I'm just gonna roll with how those purple clovers look. And we're gonna grab some dark green, and that is a very blue green. And I'm just going to start trying to block in some of the background and add some leaf details. And then I might need to step away from the background because I sure am adding a lot of detail to it for someone who was like, I want to keep this very airy. 
but I am trying to leave the paper texture visible. It's a little bit surprising probably for you guys, I don't know, is what making, what's making this really hard is there's a figure right in the middle and rather than masking her off, which I totally could have done, I did not do that. Uh, I'm trying to work around it and that's not going easily. I mean, it looks fine. Uh, it's turning out okay. I don't have any like legitimately real complaints. Just, if you've never tried masking something before, now would be a perfect example of when you would want to. Because we're spending a lot of time working around, I'm gonna have to change all the water out in this pen again because it is picked up a lot of that blue green. Now I'm picking up some of the light green and I'm just going to try to work that back in where it got kind of lost, where I tried to blur out some of that purple. So if any of you guys use Peerless watercolors in your work, even if it's just on occasion, I would love to see what sort of work you make from it. And I'd love to give you a boost. So please comment with a link to wherever you have it. And if it's not safe for work, uh, you can tweet it at me, I guess. Not safe for work, not safe for kids, not safe for all ages, all audiences, then you can tweet it at me since that's mostly an adult audience, I believe. Although it's watercolor for the most part, watercolor artists tend to do kind of safe for work stuff. Maybe it's because we spend so much time on it. We want to be able to show everybody. We want to be able to bring it to mom's house and put it on the fridge. One of you guys needs to tell me to stop. Like, say stop putting, stop fiddling with it, Becca. Just, just let it dry. Let it dry. Go switch your water out and move on. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go do those things. Those things that I just mentioned. Clean off my surface, let that dry, switch this out. All right, so this has had a chance to dry. I'm so tempted because I want, I kind of like how my clover look right now. I don't necessarily want to ruin that, but you know, you guys know me very well. You know I can never leave well enough alone. So I think I might try adding just a few details. We'll see how that goes, right? But word of the day, remember, is kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. So you need to kiss details, overly details goodbye. But just a few always looks so good on like really gestural things. That's like my favorite thing to do when I'm painting semi-realistic stuff is to get kind of loose and then tighten certain elements up. And it's been a while since I've been able to do that. So looking forward to like maybe doing that in January. I don't know. I know some of you guys have expressed interest in learning how to paint realistic things. And I would, <laughs> y'all, I do comics. I don't know that I would uh, say I am the person for that, but hey, we can learn together. Sometimes that's the best way to learn is from someone who is also interested in, in just learning. Okay, and then I'll blend some of those out just a little bit because I can't leave well enough alone. All right, clean that purple up. All right, I'm pretty satisfied with the background or as satisfied as somebody like me can be for that kind of stuff. And I want to add just the lightest, the lightest touch of shadow in her eye. So I'm gonna grab some of that pearl gray, pearl vision gray. Is that like a, re I mean, was pearl vision kind of like a Louisiana thing? Did other regions have it? All right, so a little bit of pearl gray there in her eyes. 
Gotta keep that workspace clean because we are mixing Kulu on it. And then I kind of want to leave, do her dress white and I kind of don't. Um, let's do her skin and then we can decide. But first, well, yeah, no, let's just do her skin. So, all right, guys, light handed. It's hard for me, light handed. And also last time we went too saturated and it looked like she had pink skin. So that's also not a thing we want to replicate. Oh, that might be too light handed. Gotta leave white on the paper. It's gonna drive me bonkers because it feels to me like it's not getting rendered. See, that's how you know I don't have a truly artistic eye. I'm just a writer who taught herself how to draw and then paid a lot of money to go to school <laughs> to have them teach me how to draw again. So we're really just painting the shadow, which makes sense. I've been watching Naoki Urasawa's Manben lately, and he was talking to the guy who does Children of the Sea, and he was talking about how tone, when you're applying tone, don't think of it as applying color, think of it as paint or applying your shadow. So I think that is a good approach and I probably applied too much shadow, but that's okay. We're learning. And then you guys can't see it cause it's just barely off camera, but I'm gonna do those legs, those little leggies, leggy wags as some would say. And then I'm gonna let that dry. And we'll see, we'll see what we've got. All right guys, so I wanna show you something neat I discovered by accident. I, there was a spot of water here, I just dabbed it up and it pulled up all of the paint. So what I think I'm gonna do, Miss, I just wanna do light details, is I think I'm going to try and replicate that with lots of different sizes of water drops using my water brush. That is something that water brushes are at least good for. And drip them all, not all over the place, but like in all the different areas, but especially at the top where I would want the color to come up. I think that's gonna look really cool. All right, so I left that on for like 10 minutes. I should probably give these quite a while. So I'm gonna pick up some more of the flesh tint. I'm gonna get a much heavier saturation this time and we're really coloring in just the shadows. And this is not, I hope, I hope you guys are watching this video not because you think I can teach you this technique because I am super not great at it, but that's okay. Sometimes it's okay to be mediocre at things and to learn how to do it because that means there's room to grow. So I'm gonna clean that out and soften that a little bit where the light would hit it directly. And pick up more of the flush tint. And that is a strong color for flush tint. Oh, got my hands in that one of the clovers, so I need to be a little more mindful of where I'm putting my hands. Always kind of hard for me. Wow, did he tish? Uh, I just mean when I'm painting under the nose. I'm gonna clean up that eye under the lip for sure. And get that out and blend that area and pick up some more and then definitely on undersides of the legs. Now something you could do, you can get a very similar effect with dye-based markers. So most water-based markers are dye, I mean most alcohol markers are dye-based as well, but water-based markers are, you're actually going to be able to blend with just water. So it might take a little experimenting to find one that will work well for this technique, 
but you could certainly do this with dye base markers as well. Okay, I need to go grab another paper towel and I'm going to, hasn't been 10 minutes, but I think first off, I think I will blend some of that skin tone out and you guys can't actually see it, I'm off camera. On her leg, I'm blending some of that skin tone out, softening it a bit. I wanna do that over here too, cause I feel like I put too much on this arm. It's one of the neat things about using these dye-based watercolors. You're not gonna get a lot of layers out of them because every layer reactivates the last, but you will be able to move your color around and get it closer to what you were hoping it would be. All right, then we're gonna pick up the purple in those clovers, because I think it's about ready. Isn't that neat? That's really striking there. It didn't have quite the effect. It's a little too even, but it still looks really cool and I'm glad we tried it. So we need to give all of this a chance to dry. All right, so that has had a chance to dry. I'm gonna grab some mahogany brown next pick up a lot of it and light and delicate. Oh, it's gonna be hard for me, but I'm gonna try. And with a water brush, it is somehow even harder. It's a good song, right guys? actually zoom in so you guys can see what I'm attempting. I'm attempting to keep it very light, you know, like we talked about, light and not overly detailed. I think this might be working out a little bit better than our last test, which I'll pull out and show you guys. It doesn't mean I'm gonna like turn around and go by. Well, I did turn around and buy. I did buy the Peerless full set, so I've already got it. I gotta use it now, that's the deal. But uh, I wouldn't, just because it's going all right with me right now, doesn't mean I would advise you guys turn around and do buy the Peerless. Especially if you've got like um, any, basically any dye base, uh, water based, pen, so like Tombow ABTs, um, Zigart and Graphic Twin, Clean Color Real Brush, because a lot of what I'm doing here, you can actually use those to do it, especially if you have like some scrap plastic laying around or an Ink Central's craft sheet like I'm using here, then you really don't need the Peerless. And I can't help but wonder if the Peerless really took off because Jane Davenport has like a, a specialty color set. And I know she's very popular among the craft crafting sets. So like perhaps it was that endorsement that kind of led to Peerless having a hot minute of popularity. Okay. And then we're gonna do the part that's probably gonna be one of the hardest things <laughs> we do tonight because freckles can be hard at this size. I'm gonna do an abbreviated version of Kara's freckles. There we go. Now clean all that brown out. I would have to go dump that if I was switching colors to something significantly different. Um, but I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm either gonna grab some pink or some flesh again, flesh tone rather. All right, so I'm gonna grab a little flesh tint and I'm not gonna grab geranium pink. That was too pink last time. I'm gonna grab a little royal carmine, see if that's 
little bit better. I think that is a little bit better. In fact, that might even be not saturated enough. But you know, you live and you learn. You can't always win. Almost like alizarin crimson. So that's actually the color I usually go to for Kara's skin. Blend it out a little bit and grab some flesh tint. A little bit over the eyes. And there is some of that brown that my water brush sucked in. So it's actually kind of neutralizing color a little bit, which is okay by me. Okay, I'll take advantage of that, grab a little more. Hopefully it will not um, push the color out, basically. A little under skirt there. Okay, now we've we've kind of hit we've kind of hit that point where it's like, all right, you added too many details. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the water brush and I'm going to drag it into the eyes. Can you guys see what I'm doing? Let me zoom in for you guys for the other one. I'm dragging some of that color down into that white area, so we're getting a lighter variation of that color do that in some of the hair as well and that way some of these highlights won't be too striking and i think after this dries the next layer i'll do is sepia brown and then i'll rinse out the brush and we'll do her dress grabbing a little bit of sepia and I want to be kind of strategic. So, oh, it's so dark. Uh, maybe I should have done, not done it. Meow. Oh, well, we'll find out. And if you guys, or I know you guys can see me rotating my water brush, it's because some of the bristles are frayed and get kind of bent out of shape. So just like I would with a traditional brush, I'm rotating it to find sort of the shape that will work best for what I'm trying to do. And I'll do that with inking brushes as well. It's one of the reasons why sometimes, often, my head is in the shot. Um, I'm trying to see that in my eyesight. It's not, never has been super great. Still is not super great. Although I will say I've become more mindful of when my head's in the shot. I know that's not always evident by what is uploaded here. We're kind of working through a two year backlog. Definitely want it over here. And then you definitely want it at the tops of her eye. Then we're gonna grab some Japonica Scarlet. It's a very intense Scarlet. And there. All right, so I'm gonna be working with blues now. So I want to make sure that I get all the red and pink off the mat and I'm gonna go clean my water brush out. Next up, I wanna grab a little bit of deep blue and we need lots of water because we really want a very light color. And I am probably going to work in sections because I added so much water that it wants to drip drop everywhere and I don't want it activating other sections and ruining the color in there. And deep blue is a very reddish blue Really, it's more of like um, a periwinkle or like a violet influence blue than a true blue. These are some of my favorite blues, the really warm blues, although I also like really cool blues. Whoa, way too saturated. Okay, let's see if we can remedy that. I was hoping it wouldn't be that bad. I wanted like a neat blend effect that you can kind of only really get with watercolor and it's, <laughs> instead I got a disaster. 
Oh, well. Sometimes you just have to run with your mistakes. And sometimes making mistakes helps you A, either learn more about what you're doing so you can avoid that mistake in the future, or B, it ends up turning out really cool and it forces you into decisions you would not have made, but you're glad you were kind of forced into it. So, mistakes are good. I know lots of artists, well, I know a handful, more than a handful. I know, I know two handfuls probably of artists who uh, they're just afraid to make mistakes. Ah, see, it's gotten into her arm. Let's see if we can fix that. I bet we can fix that to a degree. I don't know if we can fix that entirely. So while it's still wet, we'll use a dry paper towel and pick it up. And then after this has had a chance to dry, we'll go in with a very clean, just cleaned it in fact, a clean water brush and work that area again and see if we can't fix that. All right, let's see if we can't fix that blue boop on her arm. So with a little water and a little scrubbing. We'll dab, did any of that come up? Come on, blue tends to be kind of staining, so that could be what's going on. Oh well, all right, that's not going anywhere. That's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and start adding some darker shadow. I'm gonna try for tighter details this time. Adding a little bit of darker blue in there. mentioned earlier that I know a few artists who are afraid of mistake making mistakes and these are usually they're also usually the same kind of people who don't uh, they don't bother to like they, <laughs> they're the same sort of artists who kind of assume they're the only artists <laughs> even if they're in a, a group of artists so um, I feel like that's kind of like a compounding mistake and hopefully Hopefully they'll grow out of that because I know when I was like that, I, my work never grew at all. and I didn't ever learn anything because I wasn't taking any risks. Even little risks are still risks and still worthwhile. Little risks can add up to big learning, something like that. I don't know. All right, going to let that dry also. Thai-based watercolors are pretty interesting and they definitely have some characteristics that make them kind of unique, especially amongst watercolors. And you can get some really vibrant to downright unbelievable colors with dye-based. You can also do some neat blending effects and they reactivate almost forever. So while you can't do layering, you can do some neat water and spray techniques that might not be an option with pigment-based watercolors. Pick up some intense and saturated dark green. Add some grass. Getting close to the finish line. One of the other nice things is that either it's drying fast tonight or they just dry fast in general, but I'm not having the same longer waiting times that I would normally have with watercolor. So I'm gonna let that dry and add some final details and then maybe pull out some white correctional. Actually, I want that to be way less intense. Do you think using a water brush with this has kind of helped 
keep me honest. He certainly has helped limit how ambitious I can be. So I'm trying to knock the ear down in intensity without making it the same color as her hair. I think that'll work. Not perfect, but it'll work. Now, one of the big complaints I always get about my work, um, and it's true, it doesn't necessarily bother me, but it's true, is that, oh, there's some brown in that. Gotta get rid of that. Um, I don't, my work isn't saturated enough. It's too, uh, too desaturated to um, sort of brown and lower key. And for kids art, it's just not intense enough. So to me, this is like too high chroma. It's a little visually overstimulating, but I wonder if this is really more what they're looking for from me that I'm having trouble delivering. Cause this is much more high chroma than my usual work. Probably went too dark with the blue under the dress, but that's okay. All right, so I'm going to let this dry, clean this up, probably take a break so I can come back with fresh eyes and see if I want to even add any details with white or any other color. Like now that I'm thinking about it, some details with like cute little flowers along the hem would look really nice. So that's definitely something to think about. All right, so I think I will indeed do a cute design and I think I'm gonna start with deep yellow. I'm just going to start with a dot of that yellow color going around the circumference of her dress. Then I'm gonna pick up some Japonica Scarlet and do, or try to do, we'll see how this goes, four little petals on each of these flowers. I definitely think the lighter hand was a good idea for this. Sometimes when I'm fuel testing supplies, I realized midway through, or sometimes even further than that, that the approach I'm taking is just not right for those supplies. And mm -hmm. since I'm coming in often unfamiliar with them, um, you know, there's not really any way for me to know that, especially with something like Peerless, where most of the people talking about it are crafters and they're using it um, for their stamps and they render a lot lighter than I do. So I wasn't really able to get a good idea of what these were all about. I didn't even realize they were dye based until I'd done some digging. I guess I had thought maybe it had been, it was like a pigment powder that was baked onto uh, like a mylar sheet or a acetate sheet, something like that or a polypropylene sheet, and it's not the case. I know there are Viva Viva, Viva, Viva something like that, uh, watercolors that are pretty much the same thing by another company. In fact, my friend Kabocha ordered those, so I sent her swatches of my Peerless to try as well. Okay. And then finally, I'm gonna go in, I think, with the light green. Go in with the light green and do one leaf in between the set, at least to begin with. I may do one coming up from the top as well. And this is where the sort of simple design work is kind of where Peerless is shining. And I know these were also sort of championed by Kodak for photo, for coloring black and white photos or color retouching. In fact, they still sell sets for that. Oh, that's pretty cute. On their website, 
And I know they have a special Jane Davenport set, so I'd be really curious to see how she uses these in her work. Okay. Mm-hmm. 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 Go back and grab some deep yellow. And try to get this into a workable point because that's that was all over the place. Sometimes doing these, I mean obviously, sometimes doing these very simple designs is really meditative and um, relaxing for me. And it's not something I indulge in often because it does require a bit of time. It's usually not something I choose to do. Okay, so I think the only thing, there's like a couple of areas I kind of want to fix and then I think I'm done. Final details. So I'm going to use some PH Martin's Bleed Proof White. I really like this. I also really like Copic Opaque White. Just this one sometimes a little easier to find. And I'm going to add a few details here and there and try to be, what's the word today? Light-handed, not too many details, something like that. Fix some of the flaws. Just trying to be really light about doing it like that. Don't want the white to stand out too much. But I think we are just about done. I was so tempted to go get my spray bottle <laughs> and mask Kara off and spray. Uh, I'm glad I didn't. That can be an experiment for another day. I know I tell you guys to make mistakes and don't be afraid to make mistakes, but so, you know, only sometimes you can limit your experimentation. I know I certainly do enough of it that I probably should have some boundaries. But yeah, I think this works a lot better than what I did before. And I can, oh, hmm, let me see if I can find it. So I keep this little book with most of my tests. Okay, here is the previous Peerless watercolor test. It's testing out a bunch of different things blendability, layerability, but I wasn't really happy with it. You guys can probably see that uh, the color is just really saturated and actually my camera corrects for that saturation, but it's very saturated in real life. This is a little, it's different. Um, it's a different style for sure. I felt better about it when I'm doing it. Now that I'm comparing the two, I'm like, mm, they're not as dissimilar as I thought they were, but I feel like um, we have some really neat things going on with the the field clover, and I like the dry brush effect. This was um, overly rendered too heavy handed, whereas this was a little bit lighter and I pulled back a little bit more. I could probably have pulled back even more, but I do like that you can see some of the, the dry brushing and some more of the, they used to call it like the hand of the artist, but <laughs> my hand of the artist is heavy handed. So clearly this is the hand of the artist, but letting the materials speak for themselves. So this was a lot of fun. I want to thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Um, I hope you learned something or I hope you enjoyed yourself. I hope that something good for you comes from this. And I hope I'll see you guys again really soon. If you're interested in watercolor, I have a world of watercolor, not only here at youtube.com slash soup in my watercolor section, but over at my blog, natosoup.blogspot.com in my watercolor basics section. If you want to learn how to watercolor, then I am here to help you and here to walk you through it, both on the blog and here on the YouTube. If you guys have any questions, if you need to say anything or get a hold of me in any way, let me know in the comments below. And I hope you guys have a great day. Bye, guys.